Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, data privacy. There is a new study that ARCA, which is a cybersecurity firm, uh, which studies data privacy, uh, has now released a study. And this is what they found. And what they found is quite concerning because they have studied uh, about 330 Android and iOS apps along with websites and have essentially said that 71% of these applications can access your exact location and 62% have access to your camera. When it comes to children's apps, and this is quite concerning, they say 87% apps accessed at least one dangerous permission. To understand the study better, how this impacts us, what we should be doing, I have uh, Shivangi Natkarni uh, joining me right now uh, to explain to us what the study is about, what the key takeaways are. Uh, Ms. Natkarni, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, if you can um, uh, take us through the children's apps, and I'm going to divide this with children's apps and the other apps, uh, but let's take a look at children's apps first. If you can tell us what the key takeaways are and when compared to 2019, what's the difference? So the study, uh, essentially, we started this about four years ago where we uh, tried to study Indian apps and Indian websites because we found that there is uh, there are very few data points about India when it comes to privacy. And uh, right from the beginning, we always looked at children's apps because, you know, we were seeing anecdotal sort of, uh, you know, uh, people around us using apps, using websites and was getting pretty concerning. So we started looking and doing a deep dive into that. Um, this year's, uh, you know, while we studied about 300 plus apps uh, in the general category, business category, um, children's apps, uh, you know, we studied about 29 of them. Uh, incidentally, there are a lot more apps from India targeting children this year as compared to last year. So we could study a larger sample size. And some of those uh, findings have been of concern. So, for example, uh, you know, you did you mentioned about how 87 percent of the apps we studied take at least one dangerous permission and by dangerous permission we mean permission like access to your camera access to your audio uh, microphone access to your contact list your sms's your exact location uh, you know so on and so forth uh, and that's quite a high number. We also found uh, certain other alarming sort of, uh, or rather I would say concerning statistics. For example, you know, 57% of them allowed in-app purchase options, which essentially means that, you know, let's say uh, as a parent, you have, let's say a credit card number fed in, or you have a wallet uh, fed in, the child can actually go on, go on clicking and purchase something without really any adult supervision. Uh, there were 53% of them actually had in-app ads, which means that there was no, and there were no, uh, they were not ads uh, which were pertaining to children so you could have any type of ad streaming uh, you know showing uh, your your child being exposed to it uh, 80 percent of them allowed you to store uh, you know allowed uh, access to files on storage 30 percent of them access phone details which means that they could check who was being called from your phone what action was happening on your phone 17 um, percent of them access microphone and the ability to record audio 10% of them had access to camera. So uh, we kind of, you know, these are things which uh, rang uh, bells of concern. Um, you know, we don't yet have uh, uh, laws in place to be able to sort of curb this in India. Um, and you said that 29 of these apps were uh, studied and perhaps that number would also increase if there, considering there are so many more apps. Uh, also, how when compared to 2019, have you seen an increase? Yes, we have seen an increase um, in across all statistics, actually. Um, okay. Where uh, the number, maybe because the sample size is also larger. So we've seen hmm. an increase, not just in children's apps, we've seen them even in the regular apps that we've seen. I also want to talk to you about personal data con uh, collection. If you can uh, tell us uh, in terms of location, camera, contact list, basically any sensitive information. Uh, what is the kind of uh, trend that you're looking at when it comes to apps? 
apps when they collect via these permissions data gets collected on your phone or certain actions are initiated on your phone right so for example uh, if you have permission to write sms or to make calls then you can actually send smss on your behalf or make calls and of course you know any of this with access to camera or microphone they can actually access uh, those uh, particular devices so now what happens when this kind of data is available is that this data can get accessed from your phone and uh, it goes to central servers that belong not just to the entity whose app it is but it can also go to a th- whole host of third parties who are present in the app or the entity can further sh- share uh, you know with other pe- players as well so uh, it is one about data that is going out of your phone without you realizing it and uh, second is about you know you do you have no control over it once it goes out of your control and w- so then tell us uh, and dividing this uh, into two categories right when you look at uh, these apps that you're talking about uh, what are the list of do's and don'ts that people should do how cautious should they be so this is going to be a little contra uh, indic you know i would say contra to what the trend is because mm. you know there are more and more apps coming out right mm. and there's a lot of uh, push towards people using it's called the app economy and all that but therefore what i'm going to say is going to be contradictory but uh, reduce the number of apps you have you access to right okay. uh, so that's the first baseline uh, you know so for example we always advise print clean your phone once in a while right let you know, delete the apps you're not using so that you minimize exposure second is a uh, look of uh, look for all the sensitive permissions there available you can actually turn them off so please turn off permissions and switch them on wherever you're given control of course a uh, lot of apps don't allow you to turn off permissions but wherever you can please switch them off and uh, you know especially location camera etc be very is there, is there also because some of the data that uh, you've collected when it comes to children's apps are also quite concerning Yeah. um and and when you say dangerous what what do you mean by dangerous if you can help us explain that and second uh, is there a checklist for parents that you'd like to give out as well yes so um uh, so by dangerous first of all it's not some not a term coined by us dangerous mm-hmm. is a term coined by google for certain sets of permissions which are mm-hmm. actually because of the data that comes via these permissions they are it can cause harm right so that's mm-hmm. why they call them dangerous um what uh, a lot of people who've seen our study have actually called us and said hey you know what after this we realized how much happens and they've gone and actually turned off permissions from all the apps their children are using um been where you know turned off a whole bunch of uh, stuff deleted apps on the devices that their kids use so i would say go back relook at all the permissions you can see if you have an for example an android or an ios phone both of them tell you what dangerous permissions and high risk permissions uh, are being taken by which app so turn them off you know you can manually turn them off and uh, as i said again delete the ones which you are not using Uh, and i'm going to slightly go off track here because that is one of the questions that's coming in from anish korea he says what about the predatory loan apps which have caused uh, you know many suicides as well uh, and uh, there is a, an update that's uh, coming on that uh, aspect and i want to read this out uh, this is uh, an advisory that's coming from rbi in a statement they've said that there have been reports about individuals or small businesses falling prey to growing number of unauthorized digital lending platforms and mobile applications on promises of getting loans and um, they basically said that these reports also refer to excessive rates of interest and additional hidden charges and they basically caution uh, people uh, from you know uh, being careful is that is that what you would also be advising yes so i would say that that is actually out of uh, scope of what we do uh mm-hmm. but uh, in a lot of ways today the uh, loan some loan apps mm-hmm. i would say uh, use data from your phone to make a credit history or your you know uh, uh, establish your credit worthiness which has mm-hmm. nothing to do with your financial uh, sort of background you know so they take certain bets and then it becomes some somebody who may not really be credit worthy you know from a 
traditional uh, credit risk analysis suddenly becomes credit worthy and then it's very easy to get when easy money comes it becomes easier to get right um, mm -hmm. so there your fiscal uh, risk taking abilities uh, traditionally what you would uh, employ as what is required so this is a much larger problem than just a technology problem in fact it is not a technology problem it is just that technology aids uh, all these guys with excessive data, which can then be used actually uh, in, in ways which was not anticipated. And also help us understand uh, how uh, the data collection uh, differs uh, when compared to other countries, for instance. Is it more here uh, to do with Indian apps? And is that something that we should be worried about? Yes. So, um, so, you know, the world is moving into uh, an era where laws are coming up all over the world, which are mandating, uh, you know, are putting curbs and controls over what can be done, right? So, uh, definitely, when the Indian law comes, we can definitely see, a, we're hoping to see a change, because we did a benchmark against uh, apps in Europe, for example, where they the EU GDPR, which is a very powerful privacy legislation has come in. So, if you see some some of, I, mean, I mean, on all parameters, there's a, at least a 50% declare, you know, uh, fewer apps taking permissions as compared to India. So that gives one hope that interventions from a legal side will definitely help. Second is the ecosystem guys itself, like Google and Apple have come down pretty strongly on some permissions. Like Google made an intervention where they uh, put in very severe curbs on uh, apps taking SMS and call phone access. So if we compare from last year to this year, we've seen a, uh, it happened actually the year before last, we've seen a dramatic decline in apps taking access to your SMS and permissions because the, you know, Google makes people actually justify why they need access to SMS, for example. So I think a combination of laws and uh, interventions from, uh, you know, ecosystem players, standards bodies will hopefully make a, make a lot of difference. And when you say combination of laws is data protection bill, uh, the answer, because one of the questions that's coming in from Asmi says, do you think the government will do, ever do anything about our data privacy? I know that uh, the uh, you know PDP bill is currently being examined by the Joint uh, Parliamentary Committee, but is that the answer? Yes, that is the that is the single most important answer. And how how if you can elaborate on that, how will it help uh, you know uh, protect our data? So the bill very clearly articulates certain, uh, you know, it lays down certain basic principles. It says you will not collect data more than what is required. You will be transparent. You will just not use data for purposes it's not meant to be used for. And, you know, a whole bunch of penalties associated with this as well. And uh, the penalties that the bill is talking about, which is, you know, the trend that is there world over, which is about, you know, uh, penalties to the extent of two to four percent of global turnover of the company. So the hopefully with these kind of curves in place, I think there will be some deterrence that will force people to take uh, measures. And uh, if you see the trend worldwide, this has happened. Wherever there have been laws, things have, have sort of taken a dramatic uh, turn for the better. So I don't see anything being different in India as well. All right, so the PDP bill is the answer. But one question before we end this conversation, coming in from Bharat Rawal, he's asked this question. He says, there are many apps which take extra permissions that are not required. For example, even banking apps require record sound permission. Can such apps be misused and what should people do? Good question. Absolutely. I mean, you know, for example, we do what is called an intra app study. So, you know, in the entire banking category, we've seen uh, bank, uh, banking apps offering the same functionality on one end of the spectrum, taking just four, four dangerous permissions, the other end of the spectrum, taking 13 permissions. So you're wondering, you know, obviously then you're thinking, are these extra? Similarly mm -hmm. with wallets, we've seen a difference of between five and 17. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this excess permission is being taken, which means there is excess data being used. Uh, mm -hmm. How it gets used, you know, what are the curbs? That's not something that one can really comment on because, you know, it then goes into that particular entity. And what is the advice then, if you can, uh, for all the viewers who are watching right now, should we just not give access uh, and use as, ma as many, uh, uh, you know, as less uh, apps as possible, a few apps as possible, is that the advice? 
yes absolutely and for apps that you use some time right not always mm. um mm. just uh, delete and reinstall them i would say you know so already keep, yes yeah keep keep cleaning up do keep seeing from time to time if you're not using um of course we all need our standard apps you know four five six of them uh, but beyond that uh, don't use apps where you can avoid them okay so keep cleaning up delete and reinstall as much as possible and use as few apps as possible uh, is the advice coming in yes yeah. and uh, the fourth is of course look at the permissions and switch yes. off all permissions that you don't need Very and easy. switch off all permissions uh, thank you so much uh, miss miss natkarni for joining us and giving us uh, that information Uh, that very important imp- information that we need at this point for viewers who are watching thank you so much for watching and uh, merry christmas to you and your family thank you so much